All right, the fabulous W Midtown Atlanta at Whiskey Park. I mean, this place is fitting for a rocker like yourself. That's right. Fish. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the movie. I thought it was great. Uh, you're so fitting. Your character is you're awesome in the role as Fish. Go ahead and tell us about your character. No. Uh, <laughs> well. You tell, I, you tell I, us. Okay, you're like an 80s. See, that's a rock star thing to do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Give me the attitude. Like an actor would be like, okay, here's my movie. Okay. <laughs> well, you're the 80s washed up rocker. You've kind of like... You haven't lived your dream fully. Yeah. Uh, you get kicked out of the band Vesuvius because they want to dump you for the younger guy, so they open for White Snake. Then you go and do insurance for 20 years. Yeah. And then you join up with Matt, your nephew's band. You've seen the movie. Yes. And you're the drummer. And then yes, you take them on to. I get a stardom. second chance at living my my dream rock and roll fantasy life at age 40 by hooking up with a teenage emo garage rock band. Yeah, and a hot mom, Christine Applegate. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot, hot mom, right? Hot mom. The hottest mom ever. Yeah, did you ever have a hot mom like that? Did you kind of like, when you were growing up and... Yeah, you know, my my friend who lived down the street, uh, his mom was kind of hot, and I would always kind of like be like, oh, oh. Uh-huh. You know, I found myself strangely attracted to her in kind of a Freudian way. Sure, that's nothing okay. Nothing ever happened. It's all part of growing up, though. Because nothing nothing ever happened between me and women growing up. So, nothing, nothing yeah. ever? Then no, we can talk about it. Another interview. Another interview. Cool. All right, well, let's talk about more about the movie, The Rock. Okay. So tell me about uh, your training for the film. I know that you had a, a band growing up that you were in, Collective Moss. Collective, Collective Moss. Moss. Yeah. I have I have that uh, album you guys put out. You have our album? I do. Oh, my God. I'm one of the few people that have that. Does that include the 27-minute version of Fire on the Mountain by the Grateful Dead or just the 18? 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. The 18 is a little, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's little, a little tighter. And I can yeah. download it on my iPod without a problem. Sweet. Sweet. So did you have any training? I mean, could you play the drums? I could not play the drums. I had to start from scratch. And I didn't even know how to hold drumsticks when the drum coach showed up. And I had, you know, two weeks, two and a half weeks of, of pounding away on my garage, learning drum, learning heavy metal drumming, you know, putting on a show behind the drum kit. And, uh, and then the songs for the movie started pouring in, and I had to kind of learn those songs as well. We really wanted the music to feel real. We wanted the music to feel integral to the movie and to the story. We wanted the songs to be poppy and catchy, but believable that this could be written by an 18 year old kid who's got a garage rock band um, and that these songs could really take off and the drumming needed to feel and look real you can't fake drums in a movie no you can't and you had the the mannerisms down the outfits the ugly face yeah yeah <laughs> yeah totally you you were that rocker guy and I heard that they like drenched you with water all the time. I was constantly covered in all manner of different kinds of sweat. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. glycerin and Vaseline and mm -hmm. spritz bottles and and the leopard pants and yes. the lame. It was and it was fabulous. Oh, <laughs> and yes. uh, headband and uh, pleather. Yeah, cowboy boots, the whole thing. Yeah, I was envious of that. No. Oh, talk no. about your co-stars. Should we talk about them or just leave them out? Uh, I can't even remember their names. <laughs> yes. So. so. Well, you know, I, I do remember Christina Applegate. So hot she's one. Hot yes. one. And I love Jane Krakowski, a very short little role in there. But Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yeah. I love her. She's and then uh, anybody else you want to mention? You know, something else besides the music that was really important to us was have as funny an ensemble as we could possibly gather. Even if, the, even if people just had a handful of lines, mm -hmm. like to, uh, the fact we could get Dimitri Martin, the great stand-up comic, to do an appearance. Jason Sudeikis is hysterical. Will Arnett, Jeff Garland, Jane Lynch. People doing pretty small roles. Didn't you have a, one of the original drummers from the Beatles there? Yeah, Pete Best, yeah. the drummer from the Beatles that was kicked out right before they hired Ringo Starr. Um, in a way, kind of the spark for a, you know why The Rocker was made. He was brought in for a little cameo, and I got yeah. to interview him. He's a sweet guy. He seems to have gotten over it very well. And uh, he's doing great. I got to ask you about drumming naked. Yes. I love that part. I don't recommend it. Who's, whose idea was that? A lot of chafing going on? Yes. You've got to, you really have to lube up your drum stool. Yes, I you understand. You know what I mean? Have you I ever really... I think that's the first time that's ever been said in an interview before. Well, I love that it was. Yes. Because... We're making history. Yes. Right here, my man. I'm feeling it. Uh, was that your idea to drum naked? No, that was in the script. Uh, the, my, my character, Fish, Jack. 
That's how their band skyrockets to fame, is that he gets famous on YouTube as being the naked drummer. Seen, yes, seen by millions of hits, which is very apropos to how people are discovered these days. Absolutely. You know? Naked on the And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I had a modesty pouch. Yes. They call it? Yes. A little satchel with a drawstring. I heard it was a big satchel. A giant satchel. It was like a gunny sack. Yes. With a rope. Yeah. It was, uh, and um, so, yeah, but that was, you know, it was kind of humiliating. It was like five in the morning, sprayed down with fake sweat, oh. naked with a bunch of, like, wow. big, weird Canadian crew members all going, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Hey, before I go, i got to talk about The Office quickly. Yes. Season uh, premiere in September, one hour, uh, nominated for an Emmy, your second time. Yes. Uh, give us a little clue about Dwight and Angela. What can we look forward to? Uh, Dwangela are going to run off together and join up with Toby down in Costa Rica mm -hmm. and open a bed and breakfast called Duangela's. And there's your office spin-off. Yes, hello. Ah. I love it. And uh, last thing, uh, Steve Carell has a uh, movie out. Get smart. Douchebag. You got the rocker. Oh, Steve's a douchebag. Total. Really? It's yeah. what I've heard. I hate him. Uh, who's going to do better at the box office? Oh, geez. I wonder if my rocker movie can surpass that hmm. $187 million Get Smart box office. I think we just might. Yes, I think you might. Yeah. And uh, I all we needed was The Rock. That's all you needed. Only need. we had The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Oh, can you show me how to do that move you do? I want to be a rocker myself where you, yeah. you pound the chest like that. How does that work? Let's, let's do it. I don't okay. even know what you're doing. It's like, oh, yeah. It's never too late. Yes. To, never too late to rock. That's right. Thanks, Rain. Thank you. Oh, I love him. You can see that Rain Wilson as the rocker in theaters. It's a funny film.